Hey guys, I am here with a beautiful holdback. Um, one of Salt and, excuse me, one of Lydia and Boaz's babies from this year, born June uh, 7th. And this little creature and I want to talk to you about handling difficult to handle skinks. Getting past that fear and getting the animal that's huffy puffy and sometimes even nippy into your hands so that you can start having a hands-on relationship. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And this is Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal focused. So guys, one of the really important things to understand about blue tongues is they're not dogs. They're not domesticated dogs, they're not cats, they're not a domesticated species. Just because they're captive bred and they're typically really docile doesn't mean that they are going to naturally want to hang out with people. They're not going to naturally be inclined to actually want physical contact with a human being. There's nowhere in their natural history that that occurs. In fact, they're not even social animals for, or social obligate animals where they, they crave or they need social interaction to be psychologically um, healthy. Unlike a dog, where if you isolate a dog, it's going to suffer because it is designed to include animals in its pack. A dog has been bred to include humans in their pack and other dogs sometimes, but humans uh, as well. That's the domestication process. Whereas this animal here is not ever and has never been genetically designed to include humans in its life. And so understanding that can be very helpful. But just because skinks are not social doesn't mean they can't be tamed. Um, and it doesn't mean that they can't uh, be conditioned to tolerate human interaction, to tolerate handling, to um, in some cases even actually be positively um, stimulated mentally by being out of the enclosure and being inquisitive enough to investigate human, um, human life and life with you outside of their enclosure. Um, that's very doable uh, but you have to move past a couple things. If your animal is difficult, there's a couple things you have to move past. It's not necessarily the animal that has to move past it. Um, and that typically is fear of being bit. So just because they're socially not programmed to interact doesn't mean we can't interact with them. Um, but when we try to, if it's a difficult skink, which Folks have been messaging me going, hey, my animal's huffy puppy, it's trying to bite me, I'm afraid of getting bit. Um, and lo lots and lots of messages. And um, so skinks, they do the fight, the flight, um, and sometimes they do the intimidate. So the intimidation, that huffing, that hissing, that puffing that they do, the <laughs> right, they'll do that, that can be really intimidating. I get it. I have a tannin bar that can huff to, to get your heart racing. You're like, oh my gosh. Um, a bite is not pleasant from an adult skink. Um, you will survive it. It's not going to, it's not going to take you out. Um, however, it's unpleasant. Uh, it's not particularly like my favorite thing from a baby skink, but it's not a big deal. I've only been bit a couple times. Um, it was usually Normandy and, and Normandy, you've seen me handle him in other videos if you have. He's a sweetheart, complete sweetheart. But uh, sometimes they just don't want to be handled. Um, so, or they, they, fl they flee, they try to run away. So my tannin bar will do all three. <laughs> and so I'm gonna show you how I work with my tannin bar and I'm slowly working to handle them. Um, this is a wild caught animal that's straight out of the wild. Um, so it has very little interaction with humans for all it knows is this giant predator is about to attack me Because that's all I am to it. So I have to build a new relationship with that animal. That's the key 
Now, I know a lot of people say, hey, just bring food, give treats, try and use food motivation to get your animal to want to hang out with you, that kind of thing. And that may work for you, and I think that that is an excellent avenue to try. It has yet to work for me. I, I don't know if my skinks are just not food driven like that or what, but I have tried every treat you can imagine trying to get the animal to want to um, work or get closer and I've given a lot of time and effort to it and it's just not working. So the way that I have had success, I'm gonna share with you and I'm gonna show you here in a second with my tannin bar, the kind of the process that I've worked through and then we'll talk about it. So first thing, you hear that? You see your little body right here. So first thing is you can't go, I'm talking and so I'm already making noises that can actually scare them. So I'm gonna try and talk softer or not talk at all um, until I have the animal up. Because if I'm trying to make hissing noises, which is sometimes when people go, shh, it's okay. Well, that sounds just like a hiss, okay? So we gotta think wild animal. This is a very wild animal. This animal's been collected. And I want you to notice what I have here. This is a very soft spatula that's absolutely harmless to their jaws if they were to bite this. Now I'm using this as a block in case she tries to char to, to, to get my fingers because I really don't want to be bit. So going in like this is not ideal because um, tannin bars especially are preyed upon by birds. And so coming in over the top is really not ideal. I'm gonna try and come in um, through the side. But she's, she's cornered right now, which is not ideal either. And she may try to jump out actually which is also probably not ideal. So now we've got her up. I'm really trying to stay underneath her so I don't get tagged on the... But she hasn't seen. So now we've got her up. And we're just gonna hold her for a second. We're just gonna hold her and let her feel and get adjusted. Get adjusted to, see there's a pretty little tannin bar. We're just gonna talk gently. We're gonna let her see me. We're gonna let her get accustomed to being handled and realize, okay, I'm not hurt. I'm not eaten. No one has harmed me. I'm okay. Everything's okay. Let's see, we're letting her be, and I'm not moving. I'm not trying to run around. There's no TV on. Um, it's quiet in here. And we're just settled down. And we're just gonna let her breathe a little and settle down. And I'm just not gonna move. I'm gonna let her calm down. So this is my most difficult animal, and she was mostly a runner. I'm gonna move slow and intentional. Slow and intentional. I'm gonna support, shh. All right, see, I hissed and I said not to habit I know it's hard I'm just supporting her feet with my hands so that she feels comfy and secure and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold her I'm not moving much I'm letting her see me I'm letting her breathe I'm letting her get past her initial panic because she thought she was getting eaten and so now she's realizing I'm not eaten I'm okay I'm not eaten nothing's happening the animal hasn't hurt me, I'm okay, and that's all that's happening right now. Just letting her sit here in my hands. She sees that life is not so bad. Life's not so bad. I'm not trying to stroke her. I'm not trying to do anything but hold her. So I'm doing a little more, more movement. Just a little bit more movement to let the animal know. Everything's okay. You're not harmed. Life's okay. Switching hands, getting it a 
letting it have some feeling of being handled a little bit. session. Okay, so as you saw with the tannin bar, basically the animal was fleeing and I had to get him, get him up and make sure that the animal, I had to get past one, my fear of the huffing and puffing. I had to get past the fear of the animal possibly whipping around and getting me biting me and I had to work past the fear of uh, trying to catch him or drop him. So every time my animal were to huff or puff and I were to not handle him, I am reinforcing huffing and puffing as a method to get rid of me. Every time they try to nip at me and I not handle them, I am reinforcing nipping as a way to get rid of me. So, we cannot, when we are going to handle the animal, we must be intent to handle the animal. We cannot let their behaviors dictate the outcome because their behavior will then be um, reinforced if the outcome was their desire. For example, they don't want to be held, they huff and puff, I don't hold them, they get what they want, that has reinforced a behavior I don't want, which is huff and puff at me so that I can, the, 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 if you're waiting for the animal to like, you know, turn a certain age and be like, oh, okay, now you can handle me, I'm not going to huff and puff anymore. Um, you may not have ever handled your skink. Uh, that's kind of how that works. Because um, you, you're going to consistently reinforce the behavior. It's a lot like working with a toddler. <laughs> um, I have a toddler and I can't reinforce certain behaviors um, because he'll grow up to have certain behaviors because they were reinforced. Same with the skinks. You have to move past it. That little rubble spatula is very helpful if you're worried about a nippy animal. Um, I've had two animals bite that and then never bite again. They're like, and it didn't hurt them at all. They just bit it and then got picked up and they're like, well, why would I bite again? It didn't work. Um, and they don't usually do that kind of thinking process, but it is stored as energy wasted because the animal does not want to waste valuable energy for survival and hunting and, and, and that kind of thing. So they are genetically programmed to learn behaviors that are effective or not. And they store those. Oh, that behavior worked. I'm going to do it again next time. Oh, that behavior didn't work. Throw that out and try something else. So um, you can work past those, but you can't reinforce them because that's just making things worse and worse. So if you need to, throw on some gloves if you're afraid. If you need to, do what, it, what you need to do to getting that animal accustomed to seeing you come in and pick them up. Then maybe you move to without the gloves. I would I'd recommend starting with no gloves and try just moving past it. If you get pit, bit, I'm sorry, um, try the spatula next time to let it bite the spatula and then you pick them up and then usually they're not going to bite after you're handling them unless you're clamping down on them because they're trying to run away or something like that. If you can keep your hands moving, not too restrictive, um, they're going to typically get uh, accustomed to how it feels and they're going to remember, I was not eaten, okay, this isn't so bad, and then put them back down like I showed you with the tannin bar. But anyway, guys, I hope that this video is helpful, that uh, you kind of understand what to not reinforce and what you want to reinforce, which is you want to reinforce the fact that no matter what they do, they're going to get picked up because that's what you want. But if you don't want to handle the animal or you're okay with letting the animal dictate the relationship, um, then you need to also realize that you might need to be okay with almost never handling that animal because... Um, skinks don't want to be handled by nature so if you're gonna allow nature to run it you're not gonna handle the animal uh, you have to actually work past that in order to get an animal that's gonna want to hang out with you for the most part there's always the nature and nurture so there's the, we're talking a lot today about the nurture part but nature does have its role some animals are just like totally chill by nature 
not as many as you might think. Um, so a lot of work can really pay off, but you have to, to muster up that courage to even take a bite if necessary. I, I, you know, use a little spatula, that nice soft rubbery spatula, um, and, and let them nip that, it's not gonna hurt them at all, and let them get that out of their system, and then pick them up. Give that a shot. Hope all, uh, hope it all works out. Please, in the comments, if you have other ideas, let me know. Um, and if you uh, have had success in doing this, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you're interested in some Skinkaholic gear, there's a link down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on another episode.